so I told you guys the last time um, that I dropped a video about, um, you know, what it means when uh, the bad guys are whistling at you. Um, I had a whistler. It was unusual that he was just a little boy. I mean, this kid must have been, I don't know, like five or six years old. He was just a young boy. He was with his family. But, um, you know, usually when you get a whistler, it's um, an agent. It's a bad guy. It's somebody, when I say agent, that's someone who serves the devil, servant of Satan. And um, they're coming around you, um, not merely to distract you, but, um, you know, I don't know why the cults have some kind of fascination with um, boats and the Navy and stuff, but a lot of them do. So, you know, Ensign is a, the first rank uh, um, commission officer, usually in the Navy. My recent playlist, um, a 60 Minutes piece where the uh, Mormon church was mishandling you know, billions of dollars that had been donated to them. And uh, one of the holding companies was called Ensign Peak, P-E-A-K. But in any event, they're, they're, um, their magazine, when people still read magazines, was called Ensign. And I came across an article called um, something about the Nauvoo Whistling and Whittling Brigade. Okay. And so when the Mormon Church was founded in 1830 in upstate New York, Palmyra, New York, by um, their first so called prophet, Joseph Smith, um, they could not really stay in a place very long. Because people in those days just didn't put up with cults. They, were, they ran them out of town. And so uh, basically Joseph Smith uh, and his followers moved all over the country. And at one point they were in a place called Nauvoo, Illinois. Okay, um, They had before that been in Independence, Missouri. And they had been in a place called Kirtland, Ohio. They have one of their old... The first Mormon temple ever was built there, and um, I've been to the I've been to the Mormon temple uh, in Kirtland. You know they say um, the Mormons do that. You know that their church is true because they have the name Jesus Christ in the name of their church. Okay, and when you look at the the modern day logo, the Jesus Christ is really big um, in, in like bold big letters. They want you to know, they want you to think that. Their Jesus Christ is the same Jesus Christ that has saved both you and me. You know, there was about a four-year period where the Mormon Church did not have the name of Jesus Christ in it anywhere. And um, engraved on the front of that temple, it shows that uh, it was just called the Church of the Latter-day Saints. So there you have it memorialized, but by their own prophecy, they, are, they cannot be the one and only true church, okay? Because they were not always called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So I'm reading this article and bearing in mind that I had a lot when I was still in the cities, when I was still living in the city and I'm out here in the country, had a lot of people whistle at me. And you go, what's that? I even had, at one point I was sitting in a Jack in the Box restaurant in San Diego and this guy walks in and he looks like one of the pimps that I had seen in, in other cities. Um, and he turns on his cell phone like a sound of whistling and bird whistling. And he had, I would say, four or five other people in the restaurant at the same time. It really stopped everyone in their tracks. And what they were doing was playing just like bird whistles and whistles all simultaneously. And for like a good period of time, like 20 or 30 minutes, excuse me, 20 or 30 seconds. And um, at one point, the, the pimp gets up and kind of like motions for them all to like, you know, to like cut it and uh, that it all stopped but it was it freaked everybody out of course that's what it's meant to do so you might remember when i was telling you a story about um how the congressional record had sworn testimony of um there being human sacrifices in the salt lake city temple um and if you have a circumstance like that going on, and let me let me back it up a little bit. You had you had the Mormons um, really traveling from state to state. At one point, um, after they were in Independence, Missouri, the governor of Missouri, Boggs, B-O-G-G-S, issued a statement where. Um, 
it was basically get the Mormons out of, out of uh, Missouri, dead or alive. And um, I think they since rec- I think the state officially since recanted that because I mean that's obviously some kind of religious persecution. But they weren't fooled by the Mormons and who they were. And when they were in Kirtland, Ohio, Joseph Smith had set up a bank. Um, like a fly-by-night bank and took everybody's money and left in the middle of the night type situation. So he, he was kind of a scam artist, you know, known, known as a teller of tall tales. And um, just a, he was a fraudster. He was, he was trying to get people to believe in, in a, a false Jesus, a false gospel, and he himself was a false prophet. Um, he had many prophecies that did not come to pass. And, you know, the test in the Bible is if a prophet says anything that doesn't not come to pass or to be stoned and executed because they're not they were not a true prophet true prophet always speaks the total truth the word of god and um so anyway going back to uh you know if you believe if you credit the story of these human sacrifices that was given in the sworn testimony to the congress going on you don't want a lot of people around for that and um after joseph smith was murdered his successor, Brigham Young, was looking for a place where the Mormons could practice polygamy and um, not be uh, um, subject to persecution. And uh, at one point, Alta, California, it was still part of Mexico, and it stretched really all the way up, um, including Utah. And so when the Mormons settled in, in the the Great Salt Lake uh, Valley, um, it was still a part of Mexico. But um, very shortly after that, they had the Mexican-American War and the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, and um, Utah became part of the United States. But back when the Mormons were still in Nauvoo, they had a temple there. And um, a lot of the temples in in Mormondom, including the San Diego Temple that um, I ministered at, uh, there for a few months uh, uh, in San Diego um, is struck by lightning. You know, they have this uh, angel in Mormonism called Moroni uh, in the Book of Mormon and in their, uh, in their other scriptures. They always have to have something more than the Bible in order to convince people that their religion is true. And um, old Moroni was struck by lightning not once by, but twice before that place opened up and they had gold leaf on them and the gold leaf got all charred up. Um, their temple in uh, St. George, Utah was like, like the, the facade of that temple was destroyed by lightning. And you can go through a laundry list of Mormon temples that have been stricken uh, by lightning uh, throughout history, including recent history. Uh, the temple in Nauvoo was no different. There was a, um, a lightning strike and the temple caught fire. The Mormons, however, will say that anti-Mormons, uh, people like me who are trying to preach the gospel to Mormons, are the ones that set the fire, but I, ne- I have never believed that. And I don't think that there is any real evidence of that. But um, so the temple caught fire and, you know, it burns down to the ground. And not long after, they're, they're trying to rebuild the thing from the rubble. And then, like, if I remember the story correctly, an earthquake comes comes through, and he, it was like a hurricane or a tornado also came through and wiped, wiped it out. Okay, this uh, this evil place, and so for a really long time they had no temple there in Nauvoo. Um, they recently rebuilt it, and although not all the Mormon temples have the inverted pentagram, that, which is on the cover of the Satanic Bible. It's an upside-down pentagram, which they call Pentacle, which is um, used heavily in um, black magic and stuff. And uh, usually when they sit in a circle, it's a, it's a pentacle. It's a pentagram they've got drawn there. But So they put the pentagrams in the um, stained, glass, stained glass windows in the new Nauvoo Temple. So anyway, you assume that they're doing bad things. They're like virgin sacrifices and, um, you know, killing people. Uh, sacrificing him to the devil. And so you don't want strangers around that kind of thing. The Whistling and Whittling Brigade, what they would do is they would have these young men uh, in town, you know, whistle 
to throw people off and make them feel kind of like weirded out and unwelcome. And as a component to that, they also had um, whittlers. You know, whittling is when you get a hunk of wood and you kind of carve out, you know, a sculpture from it like an animal or, or, some, or you make a little human sculpture of it. And, and you, you carve out with like a big Bowie knife, you know, chunks and pieces out of the wood until you fashion it into what you want it to be. But you can imagine if you go, if you're a traveler uh, coming uh, through on the Oregon Trail uh, from east to west, maybe trying to make the gold rush in California. A lot of people came through that way. And um, you're going through Utah. And uh, the only people who can provision you are the Mormons. And, and because their prophet had been murdered, their false prophet had been murdered, um, there's no question about that, um, they were a little ins insular and uh, isolated. And so they didn't want people around. And so basically, you know, if you do something like whistling, people whistle all the time and you're not going to get in trouble for whistling. You're probably not going to even get in trouble for whittling. But if you see some kind of like cockeyed young guy whistling some creepy tune and, you know, uh, he's got his tongue out uh, a little bit and he's, you know, carving away with a giant knife into this piece of wood, you're going to feel like maybe he wants to carve into you. And maybe the, the, the song he's whistling is, is to be whistled to make you feel unwelcome there in the land of the dead. So if you were ever wondering why there is whistling, that's the reason. I will put in the description a, um, a bibliography showing the uh, article. There's been more recent scholarship that, the, that this group, this brigade, was um, a part of a community effort community protection. I mean, we've all heard that story before, but, you know, peace and security um, is what they're going to say a lot in the last days. Um, but the real reason was to discourage people, get them away from there so nobody, there wouldn't be any more witnesses of, uh, you know, human sacrifices there in the Mormon temple. Now, the Pope in Rome has a uh, group of bodyguards who are called the um, Swiss Guard. And the Mormon prophet has his own group of bodyguards. They call them Danites, D-A-N-I-T-E-S, like the lost tribe of Dan in the Bible. The Mormons um, believe in replacement theology, that um, they are the true spiritual Jews. I mean, Danites uh, were infamous for a lot of things, including an attempt on the life of the gogs there that issued the decree to get the Mormons out of Missouri. The thought is that the Danites exist even today. And a lot of the oppression that I had and that, that others have um, who have um, tried to preach the gospel at the Mormon temples, um, they'll still come after you. When I was at the Mormon temple in San Diego, I was just uh, 18 years old, and um, one of the security guards toward the end of the whole thing told me that I would come to regret one day what I was doing there, um, preaching the gospel at their temple. And um, he said that he was descended from um, uh, a very famous uh, uh, Danite in the Mormon church called uh, Oren Porter Rockwell. And he was um, Joseph Smith's personal bodyguard. When he was dating all these young teenage twins and stuff, uh, Joseph Smith, he had to have somebody watch out, uh, make sure there's no wives coming around, other wives coming around and see what he's up to. And um, so that, that's, the type of man, that's the type of man you get. Um, so anyway, there is a little glimpse into what the whistling means. I don't get it so much now that I've moved um, uh, to the forest here. Um, one of the first churches I went to was very bizarre. The, the pastor there, and it was a tiny church with four pastors. <laughs> okay, Sometimes you'd be there and there was a dozen people there and four of them were the pastor. But um, he started whistling a lot to me. And that, of course, raises a red flag. And and another one of the um, pastors there was a big whistler too. And, and they, when they see me, they'll still do it. Okay, so you know there. And and um, in Mormonism, the a current prophet of the Mormon Church, there was a uh, a lawsuit recently about um, sexual abuse, satanic ritual abuse of very young children um, by his his daughter and son-in-law. 
Um, I think the case was going up to the Utah Supreme Court. I haven't checked recently what happened, but but basically, if um, they're all Mormons on that Supreme Court, or four out of five of them are Mormons, you know who's going to win. So um, that's that. 